Well, uh, damn it, look alive. Five, four, three, two, one. Fuck yeah. is up, Denny's. That song is Ooh. called Seaside Shenanigans by when I lived in Humboldt. It was a variety punk. And it's in the uh, key of open open G. It's the key of open G in your mouth. All right, oh. that's what's up. <laughs> Two lonely boys in a canoe. I'm Chris Evans. That's Trevor Alstrom. Always with us. Gradient. the producer. What up? What's happening, y'all? All right. So what's the deal, guys? How's it been? How's everything going? <laughs> it's all right. But- it's pretty good. Pretty good. You know? <laughs> Are you glad to be here today? Hell yeah. No, I'm glad to be here. I love the voices to begin the podcast. They don't know what to say right now, folks. I never know how much to be in it or hey, be boo-boo. on the side. It's, well, it's understandable for you, man. Trevor's like, ah, oh, well. <laughs> I'm all over the place. I don't know. We just started and, and damn it, hey. I'm trying to get my, my courage juice in me. I know. Hey, get them courage juices it's pretty good. Flowing. Today I went and took a couple of picnic baskets. You know what I mean? Wait. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> that Yogi picnic Bear basket. started turning into something there at the end. Say it again. Is that John Wayne? Hey, boo-boo. Go get a picnic basket. Be a good time. Oh, he did it six. better the second time. I can't pinpoint it. Uh-huh. But Trevor's Trevor's crazy. Uh, I had to refine his craft. I used, I used to do the Yogi Bear voice a lot. I haven't done as much as you want but if i do it regular the crazy jazz guy yogi Berra. yeah <laughs> well he was a uh, yogi Berra was the guy and then he was the nutrition guy that was what? i think in the 70s yogi, yogi Berra was that was that, was oh, that yogi best Berra. baseball player <laughs> i'm sorry i was confused i was i was confusing the I'll guy send, that was like I'll having Trevor people up. I was hey, setting Trevor up for an easy one. And I he thought was he was like, the guy that was he's like the nutritionist, the guy that used to come on late night TV and, he was and like, sell you, guys you ninety minute abs and shit. He was like telling people to eat wood products and shit for fiber. That's right, <laughs> folks. Guy. That's two only boys in a canoe podcast. Promise that's we can't drugs. guarantee a fucking thing on this podcast. Oh, no, that's the that's the guarantee. You know what? Cool you can't shit. guarantee shit. I'm invisible now. The <laughs> only constant is change, and the only guarantee is no guarantee. Exactly, man. Is lies are lies. Is the truth old, is truth. And you'll know when the two are, are the right ones. As a wise old man once told me, never trust someone that's never shit themselves at least once in their life. I guess. All right, folks. Well, welcome to the podcast. I'm glad to be here today. <laughs> um, yeah. How was your day today, Trevor? Was it okay? Just saving the world one saw blade at a time. How'd your you pants know, uh, fare today? You want to talk about that oh, a little bit? Oh, my pants got ripped because... Uh, Moving around and it got caught in the latch. You were doing some moving and shaking. Were you were you running around playing beach volleyball with your shirt off like in Top Gun? No, and then your pants got ripped as you were going for an awesome spike. No, mine was more like I was hauling heavy blades and dealing with sharp things that got were catching clothes. My my job, my sounds like Jigsaw's wet dream from Saw. (laughs) I deal with sharp, heavy, weird, awkward things that are sometimes slippery and sharp and yeah. It's like, hello, Trevor, I'd like to play a game with you. I'd like to play a little game. So you're so used to playing with hard, sharp objects, right? You're going to have to swim through a marshmallow bath to get to the other (laughs) side. I would just ask him really specific (laughs) saw blade questions. I'd throw him off. I'd be like, so do you want to like dual pro? What size blade do you want? Do you want want triple chip grind on that? Do you uh, 
I mean, what what size car bike? And he's going to come back at you. And with, do, do you want the spline he's gonna board? Come back, How big a board do you want? Come to back like, I'll ask him a go, bunch of technical questions. Like, ah, he's going to ah. come back at you and be like, that isn't part of the game, asshole. Um, and you're lucky I don't <laughs> have this time to sit here and Google all your facts. <laughs> but you got under 60 seconds and you just wasted 45 of them being a smart ass. Trevor I, mean, Alstrom, I want to play a game. <laughs> But I don't have any saws. Will you sell me some saw blades, yeah. please? Sure. Do you, do you want easers? Do you want tongue and grooves? Like, what, what do you want, bro? I mean, I got... I. Do you want some boring bits? Like, I don't what need do you the want, technicals man? here. I just wanted some basic... Something that could cut through <laughs> cerebellums. Okay. Well, in that case, we, we have some basic skill saws that'll even do that. He but, sells him the fucking <laughs> saw blade that he uses to kill him. <laughs> perfect. He sells him a great saw blade. And he's like, "Yeah, this will be used to hack up hundreds of people." I mean, if he goes, we perfect. also we also deal Kills we also deal with blades <laughs> for for sawmills. So if you want the giant six foot <coughs> wide Trevor, blades that Trevor, are like two hundred, you're not pounds, at work anymore. Let it go. Let it go. Anyways, he's always trying to loosen you up. I know. <laughs> Moving on. So news, local news. Uh locality. All right. We had a uh, apartment fire in Eugene that happened on Wednesday, yeah. and there was a fatality happened at 5 a.m. One dead, one uh, hospitalized. Injured, yes. Sad. This was over really on. Do you, you have the address again? I do not have the address. I know it was nearby. It was like 2300 block or something. Uh, it wasn't too far from us. Do you remember what street it was on? I don't know. It was nearby. It was in the. There com- was a motherfucking fire was, in the community, it in, bro. It was in the campus <laughs> district. Which we're in. It was near the campus. Yeah, near similar. campus downtown. Uh, what about national news? Oh, I thought you were going to mention the shootings so on 18. Forward. Hold on. Well, we, we talked oh. about that Sunday. Oh, my bad. My bad. You hold did. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. We're skipping ahead. Let's slow it down. Let's pump the brakes a little bit. Let's roll Ooh. some joint real fast. Let's, let's, I'm let's, trying let's... to get to the... Okay. All right. All right. I'm trying to just... Trevor, Trevor's excited, folks, because today we're, we're premiering a skit that we've been working on. And he, he especially has been working very hard on it. And I'm very proud <laughs> I've been, of it. I've been practicing the easy guys. We got something going on with your phone here. I don't know what's quick, going on. Oh, okay. Well, quick producer note here, guys, yeah. just to let you know. Uh, as I try to assess that phone thing. As I forgot what my train of thought really was. Anyway, no. When you get your videos not. go on YouTube and they actually have video... Uh, the thumbnail, like, you know how, like, so this originated with, with adult films, but you We're put your, into adult you, films you put, here, y'all. You put your cursor <laughs> yeah. above the video and it fucking like it shows you a little bit scroll, of the video. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. YouTube does that, but it always picks the most animated moments of Trevor putting his hand, arms in the air. Yeah. Like the <laughs> first time. one, it was me with the dinosaur. <laughs> it just picks the most. <laughs> it's just me doing this. Just the whole time, just doing that. that. Hilarious! <laughs> it's gonna do it again. I think that I think that we're gonna have a great episode. I think that Trevor is very excited. He needs to stop trying to lick Littlefoot by the by the tongue. It's very weird here, folks. Uh, Trevor Thomas. thinks it's it's nice to, to lick Sorry. dinosaurs. <laughs> Sorry. He's got he's got this look in his eyes. I don't, I don't know what to make of it. Put the goddamn dinosaur <laughs> down, bud. <laughs> All right, but well, we can't monitor um, that new camera screen like we were before. It's but fine. it's still rolling, chilling. Uh, more local news before we get too ahead of ourselves. There was a man arrested in Eugene for soliciting a, a minor. Uh, he was basically trying to get an underage girl. Oh yeah, from when she was eleven, and Girl-miner. she was supposed to be up to thirteen now. Eventually, the cops got a hold of this guy and started chatting with him, uh, and he drove all the way down from Albany. To meet this girl in Eugene, he got like a place nearby and stuff. Was it a sting or was it, it was a real? It was a sting, yeah. They had to get the dude because uh, the girl had turned his conversation over to the authorities. And yeah, it's just crazy, man. You got to be real careful out there with kids. So it was and like technology. a private, a private uh, Good Samaritan sting, kind of, kind of that they similar. turned over to the cops. Yeah, they were like, "This guy's definitely a creeper. You know, he's doing weird shit. He's talking to my daughter." Check this out. So it took him a little while to get the guy, you know, caught, but eventually he did come. Surprised Chris Hansen didn't show up. Hey Tex, come have a seat. Yeah, (laughs) Chris Hansen, man. The show is up. Yeah, just be careful out there with your children, folks. The fucking the technology age is so ridiculous, and it's it's really easy for these these weird older folks to get into your your kids' phones and stuff like that. It's weird. Very strange. 
Even more local news, there was a dude that got caught selling drugs to a fucking kid at school. <laughs> <laughs> this dude was posted Hell up yeah. outside of some uh, elementary school. We need to stop school. talking about my uncle on the yeah. pod. So much. <laughs> Sorry, Grady, and it's all right. <laughs> But yeah, some dude was sitting outside Your in a CD van. trying to make van, some money. It's fine. CD van outside of a school. <laughs> it's like, hey, you kids like drugs? <laughs> All you kids like you real want, drugs? Do you want some candy too? Come on. I mean, Eugene is a beautiful place, but there are so many things that make me question the morality of this location, man. It's just there, weird. There are some spots. <laughs> you should tell Grady at some point the story about the, the guy. He's like, hey, you saw, see what I just did there? And he's like describing how he gets these chicks over. He feeds them. and You haven't no, told that's him. that's a bad so- one. Ooh. I, I got a quick story for you. I was coming out of a dispo trying to drive away. Some guy was hitting on a homeless woman that looked really rough. I mean, she was probably... You know, 40, she looked 60, though, just, you know, age. Life had not been caught. Um, I see. So yeah. the dude gave her his food stamp card and told her to, like, go into the Dollar General and buy some food. And he walks up to me and he goes, you see what I did there? He goes, I go up and I talk to him about the Lord and Jesus and stuff. And then I buy him food. And then I was like, all right. And he's like, and then I fuck him. And he's like, yeah, I take him back to my hotel room and I fuck him. And it was like, what the fuck, man? I didn't know this guy from nothing. He's like, you're standing he just next came to your up truck. to me while I was trying to drive away. And he's like, and this is my super CD plan. And I'm like, <laughs> get the fuck away from me, this bro. This guy's being nice to you and just sharing a nice tale and anecdote. He wanted I mean, some- honestly, he was doing something good. If you want to look in food? it, if yeah. you want to look in it in the yeah. grand scheme of things, he was feeding yeah. a chick that probably wasn't going to eat that night. She, she he gave, was giving her a place that was warm to stay, maybe a shower, <laughs> but he was also raping her. Ooh. Not necessarily yeah, yeah, yeah. rape yeah. per se, but let, well, let's was, let, let's say this: if she didn't go along with it, would she be eating and fucking? Would she be showering? Well, maybe not, but I mean, it's against her will, possibly, but she knows the game. I mean, she has seen. I don't know so how she real had, this is, but I fully this denounce. Real, this is a real story. She has seen. I do denounce anything bad that happened in that ever, if it yeah. happened. Well, that's the crazy True. part is that somebody was so bold as to come up to a complete stranger and be like, "See what while I did you're in there?" Traffic. Like that is why like, I don't give a fuck up. what you did. Get no. away from me. No, you I should take it. notes, younger man. Take yeah. notes. Well, there's a lot of creepy people out here. The very first person, I'm, I'll say this: the very first person I met coming to Eugene tried to sell me a bus pass. Really? Like the very, very first person Sounds, in Eugene, yep. I was like coming out of my uh, mot- hotel room, motel room. Yeah, it was a motel. And I was going to the little taco stand that was right next door. Just walking over to get tacos. tacos. Some, yeah, yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. I haven't actually and, been in there, but I've, it looks good. Well, when I yeah. went over there, the fucking guy was tweaking outside. And he's like, hey, you want a bus pass? I'll sell it to you for five bucks. And I was like, I got a car, man. He's like, can you give me a ride? And I was like, nope. Get out of here. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's some classic bus station Eugene shit. But it was just so uh, hilarious. He was like, can you give me a ride? You got a car? I want to sell you a bus pass. I was like, I don't want to. Ready and I, no, I ride the it. bus to and from work every day, and I have endless stories. <laughs> just weird no shit. Doubt. Like when a chick starts to talk to you, like a pretty girl talks to you, that's when the tweaker out of nowhere is like, hey. Well, I just I'm think. talking about a chick. This guy's like, hey, what size shoe do you wear? I think right? in I'm general, chick. Like, I think in general as, a, as a life rule. If you really don't have to take the bus, maybe you shouldn't take the bus. Man, but that is some that's environmentally unconscious, unconscious shit, baby. Shit. But maybe you carpool. Maybe you make your eco footprint really count. You could do a lot to not have to take the fucking bus. But right. damn that, it, man. The bus has too much sketchy shit, bro. I who see it every day. Who wants to get stabbed going to work? I worry. Who that's something, to that's something I have to worry about. Every bus day, ridership is actually down nationwide. Yeah, each, each because people are sick year. of the crazies on the bus. Well, I don't know what it, what it is. Well, or... corona, during coronavirus, because I was riding the bus during the quarantine, and that was interesting because they were so strict on the masks. Like, there were people all the time. Put that, your fucking mask yes, on. all the time. All the time. And then people would always want to argue, and then the bus would stop, and, and he, the bus driver would say, well, I'm not going to go on until you get off. So really? everyone on the bus immediately Holding targets everybody this motherfucker. Hostage. And wow. I remember this one guy just screamed his, his diatribe. And that's bus justice. Yeah, everyone was looking at this guy on the bus to stop. He's like, you're all fucking sheeple. 
all sheeple. Oh, I believe and it. I was, and I, at one point, I, I put my book down. I was like, get off the bus, bro. And then he's like, <laughs> fuck you. And I, I, I so, had lost yeah. my so temper. So my, my favorite thing during the pandemic was white women on planes. <laughs> oh, they were the best. I actually saw some white men on planes. There oh, was a guy of growling. Of course. You see that guy growling well, weirdly? Dude, when, the guy when, that when, fucked with Mike Tyson? That was oh, during the quarantine? Yeah. When, when society has <laughs> become big. extremely feminine, you know, the men follow suit. It's oh, okay. kind of weird because men, that's the way they've learned to communicate instead of using physicality and like, you uh-huh. know, their testosterone. They're like, well, I'll create a scene. I'll create a fucking havoc on a plane. And it's like, you don't look any better than that crazy lady two rows behind you doing the same thing, dude. <laughs> but it's just, it's more expected from a white woman mm. of, of a certain stature to be like, you all better listen. This is the way things are going to be. And everyone's just like, God damn, this Lauren bitch should have kind of carried her way into it. Like, yes. she just went to a I, Beto I, I, rally and was yeah. just like, I say, hell no, you're not taking my guns. And like, that's, that literally launched, I don't know. She it's is. amazing the power of the power of a white woman so, to. She is. She is pretty be, hot though. I gotta say, I think on the right side, I think on the right on, side, they that. have to have some poster no. girls. Or <laughs> you know, another one that's all. actually not pretty good looking. OAC. Okay. OAC. AOC. Yeah. AOC. That chick. Oh, she's Cassio hot. Cameo the hot, hot Latina chick yeah, from New York. Awesome. Oh man, that'd be fun. But she's lovely. She wouldn't take a meeting with me when I lived near her, though. Aww. Did you? Did you try? I didn't to... live in her district, though. I yeah. lived in Nadler's district. That guy, Jerry Nadler, he was on like. Yeah, he's, yeah. But did you did you try to reach her? Like, hey, I'd like to have you on a program. Trevor, yeah, why are you I, trying I, to yeah. track this woman down? <laughs> I did. I did send an email to the office, but yeah, yeah, no big deal. Well, it's hard to get uh, interviews with big political figures, yeah. and she's like a political. She's figure She's a really now big political figure. Yeah, well, she's huge. One of the biggest she's, she's, for sure. She's in the news all the time. She's a young congressman. Yeah, she's or a young congresswoman. Yeah. But yeah, no, they they have to have cheerleaders on both sides. Mm-hmm. I always feel like that. Like the men, they have to have their cheerleaders, huh. and I'm just like, dude, this is this is wrong on both ends, man. Yeah, you guys yeah. are just the cool kids, especially in, in for Congress. like the guys yeah. watching Fox News is like Tucker Carlson, Marsh Limbaugh, fucking. Uh, oh come on, Alex the, Jones, the crazy oh, man, Alex, Alex Jones, Jones. <laughs> dude. Joe Rogan was was he wasn't defending Alex Jones, but he was talking about him how he got dropped on his head uh-huh. as a kid in in like uh, high school, like some big dude dropped him on his fucking. This head. This happened to Alex and, Jones. Yeah, and he's had mental. He was never problems. the same after that. He's had mental problems since, um, and the alcohol definitely. That was uh, on the Louie episode. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Dude. He, I know. He, and, he and likes it, to it drink. makes it makes sense when you really nice. think about it. When these people dive deeply into conspiracy theories with alcohol and drugs, and they have financial influence and political influence like something's feeding that, that what's, cra- bad what's, side. what's crazy too is he, a lot of him is just fucking greedy he makes a, a lot of piece of shit <laughs> when a lot of people don't make enough wide swings there are some times when they are going to be correct like most of the shit he says is bullshit one of the few good things that like okay makes sense is when he talks about like well there's people way up there involved in the sex in the sex ring of kids like Epstein, bro, he, he I, he's he's right on that. But every most of the other shit he says is bullshit. But he, he is right that yeah, there's corruption. His, of course, he was but, using mm. his platform to to push conspiracy theory yes. and and supplements. Like, all this kinds dude of, was yeah. selling all sorts of weird supplements on all his his weird thing. vitamins. Yeah. yeah, he's like get your your testosterone up with with big T. You know, he's yeah. got all these crazy vitamins he's trying yeah. to sell. You know, you're going to learn about how the snow is actually full of nanotechnology and satellites are watching us and eat these pills makes your dick 10 inches bigger. Yeah. <laughs> you got to sound like you're on a little more cocaine, though. You're like, hey, yeah. eat these pills. Make yeah. 10 yeah. inches bigger. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. A lot right. more, more, more sporadic. You know? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, well, you have to sound a little more middle of the And then, <laughs> and then speed things up a little bit like you're like so. in a pressured speech. Okay? Because these cobbles and they're, they're coming in. They, they, they smell like ah, minerals. So. They smell like sulfur. Ah. So did anybody see his uh, interview with Andrew Callahan? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So... If Andrew awesome. Callahan got me too a little bit. He did get me too recently, but he was making enough fuss about certain things mm. that it, it's good timing. Uh, it's really good I hear timing. What you're saying. He well, he uh, he he, made he, some he, enemies he insulted Don news. Lemon. He made some enemies advice. Oh, news. Don Lemon, the the news guy, the CNN guy. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think <laughs> cool I think it's throw. really interesting timing. You know, he Glad just came out. He just came out with a whoa. Yeah, he just came out with a whole documentary about January 6th, mm. and it was like within 
two weeks of that coming out, there was a girl complaining that when he was drunk one night, he was very uh, handsy. You know, and I'm oh, just like, I don't know, man. I have a picture right with now. Andrew. He came to Wow Hall. Yeah. He was yeah. the sweetest guy. No, and that's what I mean. I thought his response was good because one of the things he did, well, you know, I try to really think about the, no No response is going to please people in these days. This is Mm-mm. such, we're so carved into our if positions you get on this. people pissed off. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But what basically he, he addressed was that some, I mean, he was pretty thorough, I think, in acknowledging that he needed to change his behavior and he felt that he was. Yeah, he understood why he was like being pushy or or, or se- he. I think he used the term sex pest behavior. Sure. Um, and but he also, I think that he he said that like some of the things people are saying right now are not true. I think like, that is I think great timing, man. It's, it's hard really to timing. people don't want to accept any nuance because then we we, we ha- what you've done is an apology that's not unequivocally an apology. Yeah. It does have a little bit of but you're still defending yourself. So is it a real apology? Uh, so. If, so if you're you can do, you can do both, you can acknowledge when some things aren't legitimately are not, the, you know, when they're fabricated, and also respond to the things that are real. So is Louis C.K. as bad as as Weinstein because he jerked off in front of some girls unprovoked? Louis know? C.K.'s thing, you know, is uh, and, and, and see that's I, where I, there is a spectrum, but the, the, the Aziz one was the exactly. one I was really Aziz like. Aziz Ansari, that was, that he, was, was very, he was rude. That that was his thing. He was rude to a girl one night. You know, like like the 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 scheme of the spectrum is like, so somebody is fucking being a violent fucking you know, uh, uh, misogynist basically, yeah. going and forcing girls to, like to have sex with the them extreme. for parts yeah. of movies. You know, which the is extreme. Hollywood, uh, which is what Hollywood was forever. But he def- he was definitely and the now most in, recent guy to yeah. Well, when Weinstein came down, him. you know, all these other people started falling. But now the the social justice thing is to find the bad guys we all got to find the bad guys and we got to bring them to justice but what happens when everybody is under that microscope you know everybody could be thought of in the wrong light especially if you spin it that way no i think i think that makes sense i mean i I, there i part of me with me too was like thank god and some level some of these people needed to be stopped sure but i totally think that an overcorrection has happened in some cases and then when there's when you, if you're not willing to listen to anything, if you've made your decision up before you've seen any evidence and facts, it does hit me a little personally. I, I kind of got me too in college. Oh, wow. Yeah, but some, and it was the thing is a little of it was, like was real in terms of words. Uh, briefly, you know, sure. a briefly. little of it was real in terms of like, oh, man, I regret that I made the person feel uncomfortable yeah. with my words, with uh, having been uh, a little drunk and going to dinner with them and just talking and saying that you're beautiful or something. Yeah. But, and that was wrong. And I don't mean to just brush that over, but that turned into this crazy, out, outrageous, outrageous thing where a person, boy. a person who I had had a consensual, ongoing, multiple times sexual relationship, said on that on one occasion they felt uncomfortable, uh, and and that's where I mean, and the, so they they try to take me through the process to get me expelled, the and whole, the whole thing ruled in my favor. It was yeah. a, as some would say, a kangaroo court. Yeah. Uh, in terms of like <laughs> the lowest possible standard of evidence could still like, expel people. I've known exactly. people where I, I feel that they probably didn't do what what was said. And, but um, yeah, so in my case, I got no kind of punishment, which pissed them off so much so they wanted much. to turn everyone against me in the exactly. social sphere. So like when I walked across the graduation stage, people they just were hissed. like, Ugh. people just hissed. No one yeah. applauded. It was crazy. It's still graduated. Crazy, I, I feel proud that I still graduated because I definitely thought about killing myself. You know. Dude, because, it's rough. Man. Yeah, because I was a very public figure, so was, yeah. people already kind of were annoyed by me, and I'm like weird and yeah. autistic, and I like attention and shit, and I ramble on other people's podcasts about personal shit. No, dude, but, that's uh, fine. <laughs> and, and a big reason why we moved through it, baby, and, and glad you're here. Well, I, I think, needed to change my behavior at a given time. I did that, and then I got punished like crazy years later, and now I'm like, hopefully, thankfully, thankfully, people are like, they know that like. Time moves on, I guess. I wish the best for that person. They were going through a, a situation that led them to want to really lash out with me. And see, this is the fucked hate. up part, is you can't even sit here and be completely <laughs> honest about how you feel. Because the wrong word could, <laughs> could, could do you in. Well, you can see me dancing around. Of but course, but see, here, herein lies the issue. Is you feel bad over something that honestly... From at least my perspective, you probably shouldn't feel as bad as you do about, but because the way that people want to make you feel, you feel worse. 
Mm. And you know, and that, therein lies a problem: is that, that people shouldn't be forcing other people to feel bad because I, they sorry. you're not fitting their demographic of what they feel is correct. Well, can I acknowledge? There's a lot of pain that comes from being a victim of those things, a survivor of those things, and then seeing someone go out and then be celebrated in the community, right? Isn't you there gotta, some pain You gotta with love that? to hate, and you gotta hate to love, man. Yeah. <laughs> Trevor, what were you going to say? I don't know. I was also going to say the fact that you were also probably known and you went as a public figure. That probably didn't. That probably magnified it. Yeah. So. Exactly. It magnified the scrutiny and the, yeah. the fact that it That's wasn't it completely. Like, I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, an innocent person and that I hadn't done nothing of the, what was being said. Yeah. But the major thing that was being said was just like completely out of control and and here and, here's the crazy and part you're still human, is that's, is that's what if thing. you did yeah. absolutely nothing and and this girl still brought something against you and just she had enough have. reasonable doubt have. to ruin your life well in her case i did do absolutely nothing exactly i, mean, I was the kindest person you go back and you can see but all you of did the text just messages, enough all of the physical but you notes did just enough in to their piss own her journal off. the next day <laughs> you did day, just enough to piss <laughs> her off so so i think that there lies a really bad side of that me yeah. too movement especially where there's young men that haven't really done much of anything mm. but because they pissed off a girl and that girl has a little bit of spite in her heart. Yep. And she's able to go through the, the process. You're the target all of a sudden of that spite. She's going to attempt to ruin yeah. your fucking life. The definitely <laughs> well, we, we just, the weapon is so strong. Exactly. That's you know, because, you because it's use not it a, in the cases where it's like, you know, really needed to do, I don't know. You know what well, I mean? Well, it's not one of those things that goes away. Especially mm. in the internet and information age. It's is true. If you look anybody up and they have bad press about them or yeah. bad negative yeah. shit, and you can find it online. And you've never met that person, so it's different. Like, if you've, you're met, already someone, if you've met someone, yeah. you're on a good, like, good terms with them. And then they're like, oh, well, like, Chris robbed a bank in Arkansas and did all this crazy shit with... <laughs> Shut up, and, man. And took, and took it all, wasn't Arkansas. You know it was Tennessee. And, and, Shut and up. And he held up that Popeye's chicken and took every, took all the chicken. They wouldn't give me a chicken munchies. sandwich. They wouldn't give me a chicken but sandwich. But I know him well enough. I wouldn't be surprised, and I would have been mad that I wasn't there with him holding up the Popeye's chicken because You would have loved it, man. Good. We got all oh, the spicy the munchies, sauce. Get some, get some spicy chicken. You know where all Greek Chris goes a little far? It's like, too, it's like, uh, it's... <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw it in. No, it's fucking great. But uh, so I, I, there's a rapper I was watching. His name's Nerdy. He's in like Minnesota. Twin Cities is a very progressive. Shout out, little sandpaper man. <laughs> <laughs> but but he, he, he posted an emotional. He left a show where he had been told by somebody that another artist on the show had sexually assaulted them, Ooh. and so he was like trying to demand to the promoter that that guy be taken off the show. Yeah, instantly, right? And so that was very emotional. I and he was be being a part of this like, operation. Right? If they're here. Yes. Well, <laughs> he was making a show of it, but he yeah. but he was he felt very serious about it, right? <laughs> it's like he feels like he's doing the right thing, and people were celebrating like he was doing the right thing yep. by instantly believing that that had to be. You know, it's hard. It's hard. So, to, so you know I, I got mean? a great example of this. We just talked about it recently. It was on Legion of Skanks. Yeah. Justin Roiland, the creator of fucking Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty. He got caught up in, in a bunch of shit from uh, 2015 wild, where he was texting text uh, under women girls. underage drunk. Mm -hmm. And he was saying all sorts of outlandish shit. One of the conversations went something like this. I'll go into it. Okay. He goes... He's talking to this girl. Thanks for making comedy out of this, dude. dude I'm you got to process it. You got to think about and it. That's, why, that's, and, and and that's why the now podcast that I've let you know is the here. brunt of it. That's why that's the why podcast was, is here, man. Get it out. That's why I was trying to make comedy. But out Justin Roiland yeah, goes okay. to this Asian uh, girl oh. and goes, "Oh, you so Chinese. He was trying. Oh, to do me about so tired. He was, really? Oh. He, was doing, he was getting ridiculous. And then he goes, yeah, and text. He was trying to text out. He he did. He texts terrible. He texts in conversation like a like a girl, like a, like a high school girl. The way he talks in text would be like if and you so, were to read something so then from he a goes, freshman in high school. Jailbait. What's your problem? Why don't you grow up and stop being such jailbait? What yeah, the fuck, fuck up dude. already? Yeah, and then he goes, and she goes something like, "I have to go to school tomorrow," and he goes, "Oh, me so sorry. sorry. Why don't you just sell yourself into sex slavery, slavery you, you dumb, dumb, stupid, stupid faggot, faggot bitch?" bitch. Oh, and then he goes, man. "Just kidding. kidding. I'm Atlanta LOL. drunk." Yeah, and then goes, the one goes, "I'm, I'm Atlanta, Atlanta drunk." I'm yeah. like, "What does that mean?" Like, I'm Atlanta, Atlanta goes on this drug. whole rant, and and then the next day, his whole thing is, "Oh no." 
are you serious? I said that? I didn't get consent? Like, like not even attempting to be like, you know, oh, I'm Very sorry. Very cringy. Whoa. Very Dude, cringy The most shit. ridiculous shit. And, and just having people out there that are really like that versus the guy that made an off-color joke or right. a guy that may, maybe got a little handsy when he was drunk. It, it's just such different worlds. It's so different. It's it so fucking crazy. different. It is crazy. Justin Roiland's a piece of shit, bro. <laughs> Fuck man, he he's a he's a brilliant he he's a brilliant it. writer. He knew he's really what he good was at doing. what he does. Yeah, he, he's a brilliant writer. He's a brilliant guy. They were making fun of him on on yeah. uh, Legion of Skanks. Like there must have been a monologue in his head. Like, oh geez, Rick, how are we gonna get out of this, this one? Right. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. No, Rick, she's underage. Rage. How the hell are we gonna get away from hey. this one? <laughs> it's all right, Morty. You'll just use the uh, well. We'll, we'll use get the into the portal gun. And, and we're we'll getting into the portal out. gun, and we'll uh, get out of here, Morty. And this timeline, we're not pedophiles anymore. Or, <laughs> by the way, pass those nachos from from uh, Malachor Five. That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Do, you guys, <laughs> do you guys want to do the skit? Yes. Yeah, man. Let's work our way into <laughs> I'm that. Trying to oh, nice. trying to work up the old silly. No, it's funny. I was like, we're we gonna do it up top. Of the episode. It's been a half hour. It's all. No, we're good, good man. Let's what? Let's <laughs> let's do that. And then we can do afterwards the movie review, the album review. But Hell yeah. So this is going to be the meat and potatoes of the episode. All right, folks. We're getting into our main justice skit. Trevor's going to be playing the uh, part of the bailiff. Played by Jamie Foxx. I will be playing the part of the judge. Thomas will be our uh, complaining witness and our announcer. announcer. I will also be and playing the, the congressman. And Trevor will be filling in for Mr. Vanderkirk. Yes. Vandermark. Yep. All right. You're watching WLBZ Channel 2, Banger Main. Up next, Main Justice. Yeah. Meet the plaintiff, Sarah, Miss Sarah Ann Tucker. She says the defendant subletted her house and ran up the water bill. She seeks $500 in reimbursement. Meet the defendant. Ethan Vandermark. He claims that the high water bill was due to a pre-existing leak. Their fate will be decided according to the unique values of the great state of Maine. This is Maine Justice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where the speaker is to point the mic. All right, I'll go now. All right, for Honorable Marshal T. Boudreau, baby. Uh-huh, all right, all right, now y'all take y'all seats, all right? Now y'all take y'all seats. I'm about to serve up a heaping spoonful of main justice here. Mm -hmm. Well, now, how you doing today, Jesse? Ooh this is a humid air here. Get it today, y'all. Oh, yeah, you, you show sure is right. We show sure is in Maine. Now, hello there, Miss Tucker. Hello, Your Honor. And how is your daughter doing? Oh, she's just fine, Your Honor. You know, she's going up to school up there in that Connecticut. Oh, yeah, well, you know they got some good schools up there. You know that is true. But I think you could learn a thing or two down here in Maine as well. <laughs> well, now, what you doing over there, Mr. Who is he? Vanderkirk? Uh, Vandermark? Is that it? You from out of town, is that right? That's correct. Hey, what the hell is going on here? Oh, <laughs> right. Now, Miss Tucker, here we go. What's all this going on here, mess now? Well, Judge, I loaned this man my house, and I willfully included utilities. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. But then I come back and, hey, he done run up the water bill as something I don't know what. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's not true. Hey, 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 you shut your mouth. Shut your mouth, boy. That's you in Maine now, that's boy. That's right. You in Maine, baby. Banger Maine, baby. <laughs> You're going to find a few things that's different around here, boy. That's right. You best watch yourself, boy. You're going to find yourself hog-tied and tossed into a swamp of gators like that. <laughs> Alligators in Maine? Mm-hmm. You damn tootin'. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Now y'all shut your butts, that's right. <laughs> okay, this man here may not be from around these parts, but let's see what this little crawl daddy's got to say. Um, okay, well, my wife and I have always wanted to go to Maine, so damn, right? Mm-hmm. 
home of jazz, baby. That's right. Mardi Gras, Steve on key. Oh, that's right. Right. Anyway, I rented this house, and I guess there was a leak in the basement, and we didn't realize it. That's why the water bill was so high. He's lying. He's lying like a viper in the red main mud. I'm not lying. Hey, 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 next time you interrupt a woman in my courtroom, we're going to send you to a lighthouse crawling with gators. <laughs> okay, now, let's see. Uh, What? <laughs> I know it. <laughs> Now, Miss Tucker, I can't believe you have a witness you want to call. That's right. I call Congressman Fenton Worthington Carey. All right. Oh, <laughs> do you swear you're going to tell the truth and nothing but the truth, baby? You want me to do uh, that? Oh, hell yeah. I got you. Okay, all right. Uh, Mr. Congressman Carey, what did you see up there? Uh, I seen this fool. He been running the water all day, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was trying to drink up the whole bayou or something. <laughs> I be like, hey, hey, what you trying to do over there? Make a fool out of her? He's ain't no bontal roulette, <laughs> my friend, because ain't nobody make a fool out of the good people of Maine except in the good Lord himself. That's right. Praise Jesus. <laughs> I don't even know what this little weirdo is saying. Hey, hey, hey. That little weirdo is an eight-term congressman. That man right there, he's a New England treasure, baby. That's right, son. I done warned you about smarting off, and I don't know if you get where you is, but you in Maine now, boy. The only place you can fill a jar full of maple syrup as it drinks directly from a bald cypress <laughs> tree. Less than a voodoo lobster get it first. What? Can someone please explain to me what is going on here? Okay, well, all right. Look here. Maybe we all relocated here after Katrina, but we don't really want to change our ways, all right? Well, maybe we part of some kind of courtroom exchange program, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or maybe there's a space-time portal, and we spend half our time in Maine and half in New Orleans, and we've started to mix the two up. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> I am so confused. All right, now, yeah. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to make my ruling, okay? Let's see, uh, Mr. Vandermark, I find you guilty of being a fast-talking, water-wasting, no-good Yankee. Uh, it's particularly great. <laughs> That's right, and I hereby sentence you to eat one of the spiciest bowls of jambalaya that you ever done see. <laughs> That's the sentence? Oh, it's going to be spicy. Sure going to have him tied up to Uncle Orville's airboat and drag his bare lily white butt across the swamp and he's going to put out that ass fire. <laughs> ass fire? Ooh, it's Chester, ass fire. that's what happens. <laughs> oh shit <laughs> That's right Is that's how we do it down here in Bangor, Maine Cause this it It's Maine Justice <laughs> uh, That's one of our favorite fucking skits from SNL man Maine Justice Thank you to Gradient and fucking Trevor man That was amazing yeah, you guys did doubt. awesome. You guys both did great. I did all right. No, you're good, man. Oh, Fun. solid times. It's Rolling hard because the, the fucking the congressman and the judge both have a bunch of lines, and the congressman and the judge are both hard accents. Oh, yeah. And yeah. like oh, yeah. hard, thick Louisiana Cajun accents. You had yes. it at a 9.5 for the judge already, and then you got to yeah, take no, it you, even harsher for... You definitely, you definitely were the... The star of the show. Sapon to Kelly, so quick home. But he, folks, I wish I could speak Creole. He is from the south, yeah. so it's a little easier for him. True. Us we watched a little. We watched a little uh, a documentary on the Louisiana uh, uh, yes. sound, kind of how Cajun and and that like talks Creole about the, sound. He talked about together. like the ethno history of the area and how you had so many ethnic groups. You had people that are Filipino. You had the native. You had the native people. Or you had. You had black slaves that came over. You had the French there. You had the Spanish. And they New all Orleans got was such together a melting pot, swaps. especially during uh, the Civil yeah, War. Yeah, and the pirates too. Even with the 1700s, you had the pirates coming in there. Because this here is main, main justice. justice. <laughs>
<laughs> Hopefully, we don't get a noise complaint. Like it sounds like there was a court going on in there, all the scavel banging, and yeah. they were like, "I could have sworn I heard some Idahoan lawyers." <laughs> <laughs> some I won't be a part of this Rocky, kangaroo court, Rocky Judge. <laughs> Exhibit A, and you just bust out a kangaroo. You get a little Joey with you. See how cute this pet? little thing is? Kangaroo court. <laughs> you set it down on the yeah. table. <laughs> good. All right, Trevor, where, where are we at, know, man? I see, that was the meat and potatoes. I just, yeah, it was good. All right. Uh, did you want to do... We didn't do world news, though. Oh, I want to uh, establish... Did we do national? I want to establish we did national real quick. Either. Yeah. Before we do the news... This is my third Ownership. time wearing this sweater on the podcast. <laughs> now let me let it be known: this is a clean sweater. How are we but doing? But I only uh, <laughs> only wear this sweater when we're doing the podcast because it's so damn comfy. Hell this yeah. sweater is brought to you by my mom. She actually bought it for me. It was really nice. <laughs> I'm a simple dude. man. I like doobies and boobies. Yeah, dude, that's like, perfect. She thought it would be cute, and I was like, yeah, I can't wear it everywhere, but it's comfy as fuck. Yeah. Anywhere it's where they'd give you shit for wearing it, you just say your mom got it for you. Yeah, of course. And you're but telling then, the truth. But that's then that's the, the, the problem is, like, you can't quite go to a child's birthday party with this. Yeah, that's not the best mm. thing to wear. Depends on... The child? Because, you know, he's getting invited cool to so many that child's has birthday parties. And yeah. at his birthday <laughs> I know party. he's missing every weekend the chance to go to little Timmy and Kevin and Angel. Yeah. I mean, you They're never know when I gotta them. go to a fucking kid's birthday party. Maybe that's man. when you bring the strippers and the, that's when you bring the strippers and the joints to the kid's birthday party. That's you know, it's a fun. I've fun never not kids known party. that I was gonna go to a birthday. I feel like I had <laughs> advance notice. It wasn't ever sprung on me like, bro, where are you at? Birthday we're party, going we're going cheese. down. You know, that's happened to me. There are guys I did metal work with in humble. That just on the spot as we're finishing up our, sh- you know, our 10 hour shift. It's like, come on, man. Let's go. My kid's birthday. We're going. Come <laughs> on, man. I'm dirty. He's like, I'll get you beer. Urgent. Okay. Urgent. Right. I got Urgent a great- appointment at the mini golf. <laughs> yeah. I got a great story. Like, bring your guitar. And they literally had me just play guitar at a kid's birthday party. Nice. He's like, keep Somebody's it nice. got to play guitar. Yeah. And he's like, keep it nice. So I just played Spanish shit. And next thing I know, there are a bunch of old ladies hanging out and being real friendly to me. Like, huh. hey, how's it going there? That's young Trevor's man? bread and butter is old bitches. He rolls up in the into a retirement facility with a with a thing full of food stamps and. and uh, what is it? Social security dollars? Fuck yeah, bro. <laughs> I roll up with tapioca pudding and those fucking weathers, like the old people candy, and just good to go. You got butterscotch? Butterscotch and a bag of prunes, and we're fucking rolling. <laughs> rolling in the old pussy. I got a funny story about a birthday. Uh, I was traveling with a buddy. We were. I was driving him, low on gas, to a, bo- a birthday party that I had no idea where the fuck it was. And this was the best part is as we're getting frustrated, we've been driving for an hour to this party. We don't know exactly where it's at. The girl's giving them texted directions, so it's kind of like as it's coming through, we're finding out where to go. Um, Those are bad directions. Yeah, and we're running low on gas, so we're all like, what the fuck? No all, one's ever been like, hey, the best way to drag me around no. is a series of text messages. Yeah, yeah, random That's text terrible. messages when you terrible. get to it. <laughs> that is the worst way to direct somebody. So we eventually arrive, low on gas. We get to the girls' party, and there's nobody there. There's two hot chicks. There's a nice pool in the back. There's a handful of guys. And I'm just like, what the fuck is going on here, bro? We just drove around for two two hours almost to get to a party where there's nobody. You know, there's two hot chicks. That's brutal. A little bit. Um, So what ends up happening is he basically explained what happened to the girl. And she's like, don't worry. This is going to be a great time. And we were just, like, she was so optimistic. We were like, okay, yeah, let's see how this goes. <laughs> so she actually gave him 20 bucks. She was like, yeah, sorry about that. Here's some money for gas. I was like, okay. He gave it to me. I was like, all right, that works out. Got gas money back. Slowly but surely, 45 minutes go by. A couple other girls start trickling in. A couple other guys. A couple people jump in the pool. The music starts going. Somebody start cooking. I think two hours in, bro. The bangingest fucking birthday party I'd been to in quite a long time. Phenomenal. And it's just like, you never know how bad things can start to to snowball into something good. Damn. So so sometimes it's really... Birthday parties can be weird because it can go bad or it can go really well. Sometimes you should stick around. Sometimes you should leave immediately. But sometimes, yeah, Yeah. just see where the party takes you. It's 
it's one of those things where you want people to be there, but the only way they can be there is if somebody showed up when no one was there. Exactly. You know, and then you more know, people showed up when there weren't many. And and I think that that's how a lot of parties start out is like somebody shows up and they're like, well, there's not a lot of people here. <laughs> and then, you know, Trevor Thomas, well, Thomas shows up, Trevor shows up, I show up. Yeah, it's three more dicks in the party, but that's three more people to have fun with, you know? And then, who knows, a couple girls show up, loosens Trevor up, he goes cannonballing into the pool. <laughs> you have any crazy party stories you want to talk about, Trevor? I have. Like, good party stories. You're going to get demonetized not. from that, because all the money we were making from you doing the nipple rub, with it's going to be You're being considered. too sexual. You can't do this upload and say this yeah. is video is for kids now. It's never been for kids. <laughs> Look, T-Rex oh, is living, oh, living large, yo. In the ball. That's how our T Rex for the audience. This is how ah, this is how little Ford just they gets wild. Inserted the T Rex figurine into the bong <laughs> head first. Hell no, yeah! No. So, do you have any cool party stories uh, of when you had fun at a party, or in a courtroom in Maine? <laughs> I mean, I definitely partied and did a lot of wild shit when I was younger. In my twenties, I was in multiple like punk and metal bands, local metal bands, where you would just be hanging out and then next thing you know people are doing a bunch of hard drugs all around you and the next thing you know you're in some random basement or a, or you're in a random like fucking garage and you're all jamming playing crazy music and you're doing it in a, in a you know a seedy part of this town right on the right on the bay there so you have like random Come on, trevor you know all the high class pollutant motherfuckers oh, of course hang I out don't. and play drug fueled late night music yeah so we would have random tweakers that sometimes would start mosh pits right right while we were playing or we would have mo- many times where we were playing and there'd be bum fights going on right there so uh was, we, so we, we had like a party or was it, it just a crazy this was a regular this was a regular ice. thing that would happen so I guess a party, but it was just a regular thing that I would experience. Sounds more like band practice that got a little out of hand. That was a normal thing that happened. This is just a happened. good old regular. And it was always fun. Regular. It was a constant thing. fun, crazy okay. thing that would happen. Okay. Once a week, you know, some funny shit would happen. There'd be a bunch of people just peeing on every bush you could imagine because there'd be endless booze. I'd be fighting drinking. motherfuckers. Are you peeing on my bush every weekend? You're killing it. You can maybe pee on that bush twice a month. Well, <laughs> every week. Change bushes. Move around. That's the secret. You move around different alleyways, different bushes. Never pee on the same bush. On my bush every week, I'd flip out. <laughs> well, then I would ask you to join the party. But like, nope. you obviously like to mosh and be be aggressive. Come Not join the mosh pit. Man. Wouldn't be you be pissed? If aggressive. Be, be be aggressive. Would you not be pissed if somebody was constantly peeing on your property? I like that you know that song. <laughs> I, I've showed him that, but I love that guy. Hell yeah. Right, Neely. It, one of my favorite things I've ever seen. I actually am going to do. I'm going to do a fucking movie review on us. But that guy, the guy did China, Illinois, and he did um, Wizard People. Dear Wizard People. Yeah, he did Wizard People. He and he did the Professor Brothers. Mm. And and uh, he, I've showed him baby cakes. I've showed him a little bit. But he got one time. He drank a whole gallon of wine to the face, and he narrated and just like ad libbed to the first Harry Potter movie. And his son, the funniest, wildest, like, ad lib I've ever heard of. And it's just, like, Harry and Ronnie and all these people doing shit. And then he just gets <laughs> drunk and just talks shit the whole time. Like, whenever Snape would show up, he's like, yeah, that old woman would show up and da-da-da. And he would just talk shit about everyone. Like, Ronald Weasley was Ronnie the Bear. And when you're just fucked up and you just watch a movie... On a guy I think, I think you're, you're reliving a great moment. I'm that reliving you an had. excellent time. I think you're reliving a great moment that you had, <laughs> and everybody else was just like, "What the fuck is going on?" Here? No, some <laughs> other people like, but these were the crazy <laughs> drug fuel guys that did bad practices. They showed this to me, and they're like, "Bro, check this out." Damn, yeah. Trevor. <sighs> Good times. I just asked I've you had about too many a party. Good times. I just asked you I've about had too a party, many good man. times. And he's like, "No parties. Crazy band practices, though." I peed on all the bushes and watched his crazy Harry Potter rendition. <laughs> well, also got in fights and end up waking up with some random women. Your and party some other story shit. went nowhere. Gradient, you got a good party story? Uh, well, Fuck I you. Did. That was great. Man, I did go out to Dillard Road to go out to a Project Halloween party 2012. Sure. And it was crazy. But we had to bicycle back. Ooh. And uh, it was like two hours, and we actually bicycled on I 5 like idiots. <laughs> oh, no. We the hill. Dillard Road was a huge, long hill. Yeah. And then by the end, like, 
it was like dark and wet, and so even coasting downhill, it didn't feel the safest. So it's not like not like super fun either way. Of course, it's more fun to go downhill than uphill. But mm-hmm. yeah, anyway, we get to the party. We see a bunch of fights, a bunch of fights. Whoa. Oh people. yeah, because there was like six hundred people, and they're fucking like ages like fucking fifteen to like twenty six. And they're you drinking, know? obviously. And they're drinking and Halloween, and it's oh you fucked my girl. Oh what the fuck, you know you stole my whatever. Yeah. And so it's just crazy shit. A lot of testosterone. And so me and Brian, we headed out, baby. Oh, totally good time. We were both 18 years old in this motherfucker's thing. And we uh, rode. <laughs> All right, J Rock. Yeah, Trevor, Trevor just pissed on himself. No, he didn't I didn't want everybody to know. No, I had the water Trevor from the bong. No, himself. I had the water from the bong the and it spilled on my crotch. Red light, oh, <laughs> danger. No, <laughs> no, the, oh, no I accidently blew into the bong oh, and cycles. the water overspilled the bong onto hey, my crotch. I did not urinate myself. It was bong water that spilled on my crotch. Doesn't, doesn't make you sound better. <laughs> Whatever. I wanted to make sure that we could get to when we get to Chris's cannabis corner. That's gonna be next, be by the way. Green. All right, can we do that next? We got a Chris? movie review. Well, oh, movie what, review. What do you want to do first? I I don't care. So I wanted to look up. I recently watched. It was a documentary on the making of Apocalypse Now. Nice. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was really cool. It was a documentary. Uh, following Francis Ford Coppola in the Philippines as he made Apocalypse Now as a movie about Vietnam. It actually won a ton of awards. And, and it was in the 70s when it came out, late 70s. And yeah, it was. Yeah. It was after... Uh, right after Vietnam. Godfather mm-hmm. 2. And it's... And it was right after the Vietnam War, so it's not like doing something 30 years later. No. Nothing like that. Birdemic 3 just came out, and I was fucking going nuts for it, man. Holy shit. It's called Heart of Darkness. Heart of Darkness. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was made in 91, and, and basically it was a bunch of footage that the wife of Francis Ford Coppola had taken of him while he was doing it. But what ended up happening was they put uh, unrealistic expectations on the cast and crew to get it done in a specific time with a budget. Um, it was all Francis Ford Coppola's money because no... Uh, no company wanted to make the film basically so they they said it was a stupid idea and he was like no this is my passion project so he threw millions of his own money into it and he enlisted the help of the philippine government to give him like the air force basically he had free reign of all their fucking military planes and you know bombs and all sorts of stuff uh what ended up happening was as the weather got bad and the scenes got long and the actors got you know sick and things happened on the set where uh people were slowly all going insane from being out on location for long periods of time away from uh you know services and medical care and stuff like that uh during the the filming there's actually some really intense scenes where Francis Ford Coppola is just pushing his actors to like give a lot, and Martin Sheen, who's the main character of the film, the cast list stacked. Bro. Yeah, dude, fucking huge Marlon cast. Marlon Brando, list. Martin Sheen, Dennis Hopper, Lawrence Fishburne, Harrison Ford. Yep. Go on. Uh, there's so other Harrison guys too. Ford dropped out. There was actually oh. yeah, there was a bunch of them. I think Val Kilmer was supposed to be in it. Dropped Damn. out. Bunch of people that had drug problems and ended up coming in. Dennis Hopper was a crazy one. He was all drugged up during the movie. They were um, like, yeah, I can't get this on my calendar. Apocalypse later. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> apocalypse now. Apocalypse <laughs> later. You might have just named the so episode, Martin bro. Sheen. <laughs> apocalypse later. Of uh, Martin Sheen ended up having a heart attack on his scene. Was like, good job. He was in a really dramatic scene where he was having a moment in his motel room where he smashes a, a mirror and he sliced his hand open. But he was having such an intense moment. He was staring into the camera and like bleeding and crying and bro. screaming. And from that, he ended up having a heart attack what? in that scene. And he had to take two weeks off or three weeks off from shooting to get Jeez, better. I bet. Um, Marlon Brando, when he finally did come to set, uh, he just didn't want to do his lines. He, it was just a whole bad production uh, from yeah. every level. They just basically went out there with a ton of money, did a bunch of drugs, and tried to make a movie. And they did <laughs> make a great movie, but it was through... Millions and millions of dollars through tons of shots wasted. A bunch of cuts never made the movie. Sounds um, like Woodstock, from what I've seen. Really, really interesting documentary. I think that both of you would love it. So please check it out. Heart nice. of Darkness. If I had to give it 
uh, one out of ten, ten being the horror. Uh, it was definitely an eight or nine, man. Sick. Yeah. And Heart of Darkness yeah. too is named after. Originally, it was a, it was a novel yes. written long before yes. about European explorers going into the Heart of Darkness, which was Congo and the yep. inner parts, interior parts it's of 100% Africa. Hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, but it's that's rare. Yeah. I've I've actually I've that's a book I've actually wanted to read and I've I've read a little bit of and it. And that's what Apocalypse Now is based yes. off of is the Heart, Heart of, Darkness. of Darkness. But when they tried to originally make the movie, it was like too much of a project. They were using it as a the, guiding principle, kind of like when you had um, Oh Brother Where Art Thou. They, sure. were, they were following the story of Odysseus, the, Od- the Odyssey, yeah, right. which is the story of Odysseus. So they were using that mythological sort of framework and falling along you want to know who my favorite character in that movie is the oh brother where art thou it's the blind railway man in the beginning oh yeah where he's like no matter the obstacles you may face do not be weary as the lord is your shepherd and he will guide you through everything and then they're just he, like on a rail car he was kind of you know alone. when i watched that movie first time 2022 oh wow not crazy one time i've seen it only Stay did out you of like the it? You, how do you like it though? It was good. Luckily, I you know because you hype up a movie that long without seeing it, it better be good. It's good, and it's yeah. good. It's a great movie. Great movie. I like Super the music fun. too. John music. fucking Goodman as the Cyclops. Oh, he's so the good. KKK. So yeah. good. He's like, it's all about the dollar, boys. Yeah. He beats him up. So what I'm showing them, and now, hello, my arm's on camera, I think. Hey. So NBA All World, they're not paying me, but Niantic, who made Pokemon Go, made one where it's like, oh, instead of catching Pokemon, go out and recruit NBA players for your team. So that's what I'm doing here. Your first problem is you're recruiting someone from Sacramento Kings. I'm from that town. (laughs) Worst team in the NBA. Do not pick someone from the Kings. For the last 20 years, they've consistently been pretty bad. Pretty terrible. Pretty bad. We are the Cleveland Browns of the NBA. It's okay. Somebody's got to be. Yep. Lasers have kicked for a little bit, but they've had a a year that's been pretty rocky and pretty streaky in bad ways. So what else we got, Trevor? Mm. Did we go over national? Did we go over national news? I don't think so. I don't well, let's think just so. try to cruise through it real quick because we're at. Well, I mean, this game did come out nationally. We're at fifty-six minutes. Okay, fuck. Trevor's so worried. <laughs> All right. He hasn't had a good episode. No, it's good. It's been great. All right. So, anyone have any quick national topics, real quick? Uh, there was another shooting uh, a day after that uh, shooting California. that happened in California. Uh, a lot of mass shootings in San Mateo people. County. This was another uh, person of Asian descent. It was an older Asian guy that rolled into a, a dance hall. And there was a young man that was basically man in the door that watched him walk through with the gun. And he tussled with him in the in the hall, the, the like, yeah. waiting hall. Um, got the gun away from him. The guy kind of got shamed into leaving without his gun, and then he, he left out. But, yeah, man, it's fucked up. He went and he shot a bunch of people at a farm he worked at. It was a mushroom farm, and then he went to go to one of these dance halls and shoot up the dance hall, and he ended up running into the guy that took the gun Was it him. a psychedelic it was a mushroom, mushroom farm? farm? Was, yeah, it was a California uh, farm. Was it a psychedelic mushroom farm? I think it was just a like farm. regular yeah. just portobello, a just regular? Yeah, mushrooms are farmed. Yeah. yeah. Some um, shiitake. Before Something. He, before he sh- went and shot Taki. Chantrells. Uh, yeah. It's crazy, man. Like, how many more shootings got to happen, bro? Let's let's just, you know. And, and that even makes stop. it even more uh, extreme for the person that is coming up after these people that are like, how do I make my point now that school shootings and mass shootings are so normal? Do I have to blow something up? Like, how do you go man. bigger than, than a bunch of shots? You know? You're like, I got to blow a building up? No, I, it, it is scary to think of the oh, arms boy. race of that, but... I would just hope people just kind of like, you know, go to therapy. Nah, you know bro. <laughs> the, the, the trend seems to be that everybody wants to outdo their predecessor. To move on. Yeah. So, so the bigger the mass shooting, the more people care and the more people will learn from it. So it's like to really make your point, we got to start drowning nation, Joe. Let's just start pushing fucking nations off into the water. <laughs> All right. On to world news. <laughs> Yeah. Seems unproductive. Yeah. I know. So, world, so <laughs> some world news. Russia's mad because Germany and the U.S. are sending a bunch of tanks to the Ukraine. Yeah, they're getting some Abrams. Yeah. 31 tanks sent from the United States, and the Germans are sending some uh, some German tanks as well. All right. You yeah. guys have hella NBA players around here. I just recruited three. <laughs> I'm going to work on my fifth. <laughs> Kevin Love, he's good. Moving on. 
Do you want to do uh See, so you, you did move if you got already. Do yeah. you want to do cannabis corner real quick? Real quick. Uh, the plant's doing all right. She's hanging out in the room. She's doing great. I uh, topped her. The mother? Yeah, the mother I topped clone. her here yeah. three days ago. And that was just to stunt her from trying to uh, grow her flowers. Um, basically, when you top, it just transitions the plant back into a uh, uh, vegetative phase. Um, I'm going to go ahead and here in the next couple weeks after i get paid go ahead and build that um base for the plant i gotta go ahead and set up for the next run but it's all time and money right now and that's what i'm waiting on time and money baby time and money that's that's the life that's the lifeblood man time and money right, i'll do i'll do my album review so apparently i did i've there's a glaring omission because i do a wide cornucopia of Genres of music, generally. I do anything from cumbia to black metal, but apparently I haven't done reggae, and I love reggae. Trevor so, accused me of not liking reggae the other day. I was like, what are you talking about? Well, he, he's definitely... I mean, I get it. Bob Marley's like the Metallica of reggae. It's played, overplayed all the time. You can hear a lot of reggae. Bob Marley's not the only reggae out I know, there, folks. and I, I like a lot of reggae besides Bob Marley. There's, so I like you, a lot of the old school. Who do you got for us, Trevor? So I picked... Lee Scratch Perry, who's an OG in the, I'm sure have you heard of him? He's an OG in the in the oh, game. Yeah, he's been yep. a, he's been around since the '60s, back when early reggae was known as uh, was known as ska, and ska was, uh, ska ska originally was a was a very sort of dancey ska, reggae ska, ska. in the '50s and '60s. And when a lot of Jamaican immigrants went to America, especially when South they went Florida. to South Florida, and when a lot of them also went to UK and mixed with in the 60s and 70s when rock and roll was becoming. So then it became ska, known as ska, when it makes like with the, the white English guys, the working class. A lot and of factories. Calypso drums. And, and it, it clips the drums too, but it mixed and became ska like ska punk. All right. But okay. ska was, was that. So he, he's been around since the 60s and then the 70s when things were more dub. Where it was less in, where it was less singing, but dub reggae is more like experimenting with instru- with like instrumentation. All right, Trevor. Yeah, you hit that snare and it goes, <laughs> and you let it fucking ride for ten measures, and then you smoke multiple doobies because it's Jamaica. But smoke two joints before yeah, you smoke two joints, joints. and then you, and smoke you smoke two more. You smoke two in time of peace and two in time. Fuck of war. sublime. Anyways. So it's Lee Scratch Perry and his background band called The Upsetters, and the album is called Super Ape. It's from 1976, so a bit of a throwback. And the song is called I Chase the Devil, which is a classic reggae. Nice. Ooh, so I Chase nice. the Devil. It's a cla- And the whole album is like probably 45 minutes, but I love the fucking picture. Yes. It's like of King Kong. Yes. I don't know if Very we get this. Very cool. Very cool art. It's a Rastafarian King Kong, pretty much. You got that Rastafari. Damn. Some hey, break. my name not be Chet. There's Hanks. a flag. There's a flag. My name not be hey, Chet Hanks, Hanks. over oh here. My yeah. God. I sell a ketchup popsicle no, no, to no. a woman in white gloves. Hey. Ah, <laughs> Irie, Irie. Dude, he has some of the best popsicle of any white guy I've ever seen, though. <laughs> But no, he doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't, bro. That's because I don't hang around white guys. That's what I mean. Plot. That's it's funny. Nor because watch videos of if it. If you if you hey, live I in drink... South Florida, bro, where there's a lot of Jamaicans, right, right. there's a lot of white dudes that speak Jamaican talk. Yeah. But they basically just remind you of Sean Paul. Hey, okay. you're like, what's up, Sean Paul? Where's your yeah, dreads at, man? <laughs> hey, I'm drinking Cellas with a chick named Bella because I'm, I'm a good, good fella. Hey, hey, there you go. Sell a ketchup popsicle to a woman in white gloves. My name's Chet Hanks, boy. White boy summer. White oh, boy summer. Like <laughs> Chet Hanks. Sell a ketchup popsicle to a woman in white gloves. That's an old expression. He's reusing it. But that's, Chet Hanks is... It's an expression you're doing something impossible, like trying to catch duct tape... Trying to catch wind with duct tape. Chet, <laughs> Chet Hanks. I'm like, oh, I fucked that up. We're trying to catch wind with duct tape. <laughs> Chet Hanks is just a bump awesome. above the fucking Lonely Island Boys. He's a just, bump. Yeah. 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 Island Boys. Wait. Boy. Yeah. Island Boys. Oh, like we're just doing boy. reggae shit talk. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. But yeah. great album. If you're talking uh, Tammy hats, the big hats you wear when you have the dreads, I would give it nine Tammy hats out of ten. That's so funny. it's pretty good. Pretty fucking Trevor good. knows about his white reggae beer from I, California. I did live in NorCal. <laughs> I lived in Humboldt, which was the mecca of 
of of white people trying to trying to be Jamaican. White and, people and, trying and to be just, Jamaican. Not just white people, by the way. There were Asians. There was Latinos. Everyone you got there. Your Asians, you got everyone your there was like, "Oh, I'm in Humboldt, so I must act Rastafarian." Now it's kind of like St. Paddy's Day. Everyone's Irish all of a sudden. If you're in Humboldt, it's like, "Oh, well, here's here's a joint. Go listen to some Bob Marley. Here's some patchouli oil, and then go to your granola bar and take a long walk on the beach over here, and then go hang out in the where's hang that out up there, and then and then you're gonna jam <laughs> with a guy named Phoenix. You're gonna jam in the certain this farmer's market." Fun quick story. There was a guy at Jam <laughs> named Phoenix. I love that. And this humble. is going nowhere but everywhere all at the yes. same time. Tell that <laughs> pony. I have a funny he story really I want to tell. Oh, I want a funny so story. Tell that tell. pony so Costner to get out of his trailer. I'm going to fucking Clint Eastwood tell this that shit. Pony, I'm Clint Eastwood this shit. Tell that pony Costner ah. to give me his hoof. All right. So I was in, I was at the, the <laughs> I was at the flea market, farmer's market in Arcata, California one time, which is in Humboldt, where Humboldt State University is. And I was hanging Trevor out. Trevor wants to talk so bad. Let's fucking go. And <laughs> I and I was hanging out. There were people like doing all kinds of ketamine, all kinds of drugs. There were guys with like petting rabbits. There were people selling radishes. There was all kinds of shit going on. <laughs> people playing hacky rabbits, sack. Rabbits, radishes, and there hacky was people. Sacks. There were people playing hacky sack and chainmail armor. Like people doing fire dancing. Like all kinds of shit going on. And this was a normal event going on. And. There's this guy named Phoenix, who I guess was like a local guy just kind of camping around there, homeless dude camping around, and he was known for playing music. And I was going to school there at the time. Whoa, and I, and I had my fucking me up. And I had my guitar with and he we jammed together. Where is this story going? Give me a second. <laughs> so so we jam, so we jammed. He does and, and this, folks. Some, he and does I, this. And I gave him some That's gave good. him some guitar picks. And after and then a few years later I found out that this guy ended up murdering two people with a crossbow and then severely <laughs> wounded a third person at a bum camp on the dunes along the beach just a few miles away in the town of Manila. So I ended up jamming and hanging out with the crossbow killer a few years before he did his thing. Why are you excited to tell us this? It's just a funny <laughs> story. It's the, the coincidence. I the hung out with a murderer oh, once upon funny. a time. Before he did his thing. Before though. he murdered a bunch of hey, people. Story. Maybe I drove him to it. Maybe I was the cause of all the Maybe. world's uh, uh, so <laughs> sorrow. This is solid minute 66 content. This is, did you like this it, though? Is, True oh, story, yeah. too. Oh, yeah, dude. We're all with you, bro. Hell, yeah. All right. I think Trevor just doesn't I mean, know I wish you would have prevented when to keep the, it the violence. I was away when this happened. I was, <laughs> Trevor was the guy that did I it. I was in the wilderness 100 miles Trevor away. Trevor just to brag about the connection. But no, not. no, exactly. Yeah. He's talking about a guy he knew once upon a I time. I met him once. You know, Tyler Durden over here. Oh, I would here. be surprised. There. Yeah, yeah, much deeper linkages. Yeah, exactly. The first rule yeah. about Trevor's Fight Club <gasps> is don't go into Trevor's Fight Club. I never saw them in the same room at the same time. Trevor, That's grab your saying. guitar and play us out, man. We're right. over time. Yeah, I put you in the red zone. Trevor's sitting here and he's like, well, hold on. I got a quick story. It'll only take a moment. Seven minutes later. A minute and 16. And like I was saying. A minute 16. <laughs> Seven minutes. Trevor Wait. just don't know when to say when. Pink is pretty. It was fucking my, my eyes up, though, because I was listening to him and the color scheme was changing. I was like, Whoa. yeah, I saw that. I didn't know I was going to have a seizure. I was like, ah. <laughs> Yes. Yes. I like about the siren yes. in the background. Go sirens, go. Go sirens, go. Go sirens, go. We got the go sirens, go. Yeah, go sirens, go. Go sirens, go. We got some red, blue, yellows. Let's go siren, go. He's trying to help, but he knocked over the light. Said, go sirens, go. Go sirens, go. He's teaching me the secrets of the pumpkin patch. Ah, ah. <laughs> he took me to a piece of coal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> Don't worry, buddy. Nobody makes it to the simulator their first time. Not even me. He's like, not even you? He's like, yeah, not even not me, even buddy. <laughs> so I just use a T-Rex Turn as a slide. Turn down and throw cool. a piece of coal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All righty, yeah. folks. It's been awesome. We'll get at you next time. Thank that you, Gradient, for being check here. We got all the episodes uploaded. Go check us out at Two Lonely Boys in a Canoe Podcast.
Yeah. At YouTube? Well, Podbean? Yeah, yeah. Search that some, somewhere. Any, any platform where you find your damn podcast. Go find them here. Yep. The cops are outside. We got to go, y'all. Yeah. We got to <laughs> go. Uh, we're sorry. Yeah. We got to cut this one uh, short, folks. We're out of here. Peace. Later. <laughs>